Hey there guys, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Level Design Essentials series. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at what a static mesh is, how we can use it in our game and also a quick introduction to the static mesh editor, how we can use it and also how we can download some additional static meshes from the Unreal Engine marketplace. Now a static mesh, I'm going to start off by explaining what it is. A static mesh is essentially a 3D model. Model, and a game engine can use these to be placed into your scene so you can use them to decorate your scene and a 3d model is going to be everything ranging from bushes to doors to chairs pipes all that kind of stuff and these 3d models are going to be made in a third party modeling package and that's going to be things like blender 3ds max um, Maya and stuff like that and they are going to be imported into Unreal Engine 4 and like I said you can use them to decorate your scene. Now Unreal Engine 4 cannot make these static meshes but they can make use of them. So what I'm going to be doing in today's video is showing you how you can make use of them within your scene and also how you can adjust some of the settings in the static mesh editor. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into it. So if you want to get access to some static meshes, Unreal Engine 4 starter content actually comes with some of that for you. And the easiest way to get to that is just go to starter content and then props and this is all down in your content browser. And you can see by default we have got a couple of static meshes that we've got available to us already. And that's things like chairs, bushes, couches, doors, door frames. And if we want to use one of these it's really really simple. So let's say I want to work with this table here, it's round. All I've got to do to use this is just find where I want to place it and then click, drag and drop and then you are going to see our table pops up into our scene. And what we can also do with this table is we can use all of the normal transformation tools on it. So in the top right hand corner of our viewport, we could go and move this. So we can move it left, right, up, down, and so on. We can rotate it round. We can scale this up and down just like that, it's really simple. And that is just how easy it is to use a 3D model inside of Unreal Engine 4. Now, one thing you'll notice is with this static mesh selected, we have a bunch of settings available to us in the details panel. So in the details panel, with the static mesh object selected, we can first things first change the static mesh. Now generally, I'm just going to leave this as it is, but if you wanted to, you could change it to any one of your other objects. So for example, if I wanted to, I could type in a preview mesh and I could use that instead, which was this little shape, and you can change it to a different model. Now beneath this, you have the option to change some materials. Now the materials are essentially your way of telling the engine how you want it to look in terms of color. Now what I'm going to do is change this mesh to something easier. So I'm going to go to static mesh at the top here and I'm going to take it and change it to a rock. And the reason why I've changed this to a rock is because it only has one material. And with this material, I could change this to something that we've created or that already comes with the engine. Now, if you want to learn how to make some materials, I definitely advise you check out my playlist on that and also my previous videos on this series on uh, creating materials. But what I'm going to do is from the materials, I'm going to go to the drop down and I'm going to type in gold. And you can see I've already got a metal gold and you can see that this has now made the change on my static mesh and I've now got a gold rock and I can continue to change this to other materials such as steel, um, I could change this to anything I like really, it's entirely up to you as long as you have the material for it you can apply it to your 3D model and the model itself the shape is not going to change just the colour of it and that is what the material does. And like I said earlier, you cannot change the model inside of the engine, just some of the settings about it, such as materials, 
collision, LOD stuff, and we're going to be getting into that in a little bit more detail as we go deeper into the series. So moving on, we've got a couple of other settings. The physics one is going to be a video of its own, so I'm not going to explain that. But the next one that you might want to do is work with collision. So as of right now, if I press play and try run into my rock, you can see the player go straight through it. So what you're going to want to do to stop that is you want to set collision presets to block all. And then if I press play and walk into it, it shouldn't allow us to do it. And you can see at the moment, we still can. And that is because the object doesn't have collision. So if that is the case, what you need to do is go and open up the static mesh inside of the static mesh editor by just double clicking on, double clicking on it in the content browser and then just go to collision and then from there you can add collision. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to add 26 DOP simplified collision. And then if I press play and try walk into the rock, I can no longer do that. I've just changed one of the settings about it. I've changed the collision. And that is what the static mesh editor is for. This static mesh editor is going to allow you to change little details about your 3D model like that. That is just one of the many things you can do inside of here. Now notice, inside of a static mesh editor, we have got a details panel, and that was similar to the one that we saw just a moment ago. And the reason why we have this details panel here is this is going to allow us to change the default settings for your static mesh. So you can change your default material for the rock. So if I wanted it to be a sandstone rock by default, every single time I drag this rock into my scene now, it's going to be made out of sandstone instead of the not normal material. And it's the same with the LOD settings, it's the same with the collision settings. So if you do it within your scene, like I did with this one, it's on a per asset basis, or if I do it inside of a static mesh editor, it's going to apply it to all of them by default. Now, there is lots and lots of different settings that you have available in here, and it's gonna take you a little bit of time to get used to all of these, and realistically, you will not be able to learn these in just one video. This is something that you will understand as you get deeper and deeper into the series and deeper and deeper into learning Unreal Engine 4. But what I do want you to know how to do now is get into the static mesh editor, play around with the materials, play around with the collision to make sure that works. And as we start to make games and that kind of stuff, we'll use some of the more advanced settings like LODs, taking a look at the UVs and so on. Anyway guys, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to show you inside of the editor. What I wanted to do quickly actually was go into the Unreal Engine 4 marketplace and show you how you can download some more assets as some more 3D models if you don't have any already. And the great place and the, sorry, the best place to do that is inside of the Unreal Engine 4 marketplace. And you can just go to the home page, which it should be on by default. And then from here, you could purchase some. However, there is actually a bunch of free pieces that you can download, such as the Open World Demo Collection, which is a bunch of trees and rocks and bushes and stuff that we're actually going to be using in the next video. But if I go and press Add to Project and then choose the one that I'm working with now, which is Unreal Essentials, and press Add to Project, it is going to add those assets into my content browser so that I can use these inside of my game. Now, this is going to take a little while, but for now, I'm 100% happy with what I've taught you for static meshes, and I hope you look forward to my next video where I'm going to be showing you how you can add um, lots and lots of static meshes in at once to create the foliage, so trees and bushes, adding it instead of one by one. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep curating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.